What's going on you guys? My name is Cole Zarek. Thank you for stopping by the channel. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial in Logic Pro X. I'm going to show you guys the quickest and easiest way to throw together a couple of samples and make a hip hop beat. Let's get into it. All right, so what I have in front of me, I have a jazz sample that's instrumental, and I have drums that I laid over it, and let's listen. Just a simple, mellow, clean, fun. Here are the drums by themselves. And here is the jazz sample by itself. All right, so what I want to show you in this tutorial, how to sync up these two songs that have different tempos to sync them up into one song and where I got these samples and where I think is the best place to look for samples for when you're making your own music. So first thing, let's go ahead and start a brand new project so you can see step by step how I did this. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop these two songs. So let's focus on our jazz sample. The first thing, the first step we want to do in sampling is we want to identify what BPM it's at. What's the tempo? So you can either go into your effects, you can go into metering and your BPM counter and let it do it for you. So what the BPM counter is going to do is going to listen to the song and it's going to identify what BPM it's at. 84, okay. So let's go up to our top. BPM and we'll type in 84. So a quick tip for you guys if the BPM counter is not working because sometimes it's uh, it's it's hard to rely on it you can go to a website called all8.com you can honestly just type in BPM counter on Google and it's the first thing that pops up and what this will let you do is if you you can tap any key on your keyboard along with the beat and you can identify it manually. So what I usually do in this case is I'll play the song and I'll tap along to identify. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. All right. So you can see that it, we pretty much came to the same conclusion, 84 or 85. That's the nearest beat that it's going to. All right, so the next thing we want to do you see my cursor? I'm going to go up here to show hide flex. I'm going to click on that icon. I'm, I'm going to click on it again. Then I'm going to click the dra drop down menu on rhythmic and you can see a bunch of lines just appeared. So what these lines are going to do, you're going to want to pick one of these lines to identify as the very beginning of the beat. So if you can listen to it, it's going to have like a little small intro, like a drum fill, like da, da, start and we're gonna to want to identify where that starts. Now, so that's where the beat starts. It starts at this line right here. This part is not relevant. It's just the beginning intro part. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna click on it and I wanna cut it and I wanna bring it to the very front of our project. So that's where we are starting. Line that up with the number one so that's what we're starting with. I'm actually going to line it up with... Uh, all right, I'm going to move this out so I have a little bit of room to work with. And I want this to line up perfectly. So I'm going to go to one. I also want to cut... Stop. I want... All right, that is now lined up. And what we want to do is we want to identify the next point where that starts. So the next thing we want to do now that that's lined up, we know when it starts. We want to know when the next bar starts. What I mean by that is listen. One and two and three and four and there. Right there. That's where the next line starts. You can see it's a little bit off, but you want to squeeze it over to the two. And that'll push everything in this area and make it line up. So when you play with the metronome, it'll completely... Two, three, 
そうね。ボーン。ボーン。Just make sure it's lined up perfectly with the three. This one's a little bit tricky because it's harder to identify. There. But it's this one. Just to test it out, you can cut it, copy and paste, and see how it transitions. Perfect. So we have a seamless transition. Let's just copy and paste. And there we go. You've synced it up. Now we just have to work on the drums. So let's go ahead to our drums. Let's click the same icon, the show hide flex. It'll do the same thing. It'll bring up these little lines, which are super crucial to syncing up the beat. So we want to find out where the drums start. Where do the drums start? All right, I'm going to mute this and we're going to start. Pretty simple. This first one, we're going to. Select it, we're going to cut it, we're going to drag it to the very front. So these both start on the same boom. Make sure it's as close as you can make it. You want to be as precise as possible. And we're going to we're going to do the same thing. We're going to listen to it and find out where it starts. So it starts boom and there. So it starts again on this. Downbeat. So now we've just sped it up. But see, the thing is, you got to do it with this second one too because it's not going. The thing is, you got to do it with this part too. There. So right at this point, it'll squeeze it, it'll sync it up, it'll speed it up a little bit. So we'll cut that. That's the rest of the song. We can copy and we can paste it. All right, there you have it. Now let's listen to all of it together. There we go. Looks like it's synced up perfectly. We have ourselves a beat. Now I want to show you guys one other thing is if you go up to the BPM now, you can change it. You can mess around with the speed. So I change it to 100 BPM. Now that these two are,、uh, are activated, make sure that these. Flex, enable flex on both tracks, and it will change the BPM. It'll speed it up. So let's listen to how it changes the song when, it's, when we play a faster BPM. So you can make it faster, you can make it significantly slower. That might distort the track. Keep that in mind. In this case, it really doesn't translate if you go too far、um, slow because it'll stretch the sound to, to compensate. So we had it at 84 to begin with, correct? It sounds the most natural. It's going to distort the more, the slower you make it and the faster you make it. So let's go crazy. Let's go 160, see how that sounds. Uh, 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 uh. So, once again, it's going to distort it severely. But there you have it. You just learned how to sample in the quickest, easiest way. Now that you've learned that, let's take a look at where I found these samples and the best source to get samples to, to look for inspiration. Go ahead on Google and type in whosampled.com. What I like to do is, if, I'm, if you're just curious, so let's take a look at Kendrick. It's going to have. Samples. So you can go and you can check out every song that Kendrick has put out and where the samples are from. All right, so let's click on this sample of Poetic Justice. It'll even tell you where the sample appears in the original song. So we'll click on 410, it'll jump to 410. This is the original song by Janet Jackson that Kendrick sampled. And you can see sample appears on 59. Get it, say if you a bad bitch, put your hands up high. Hands up high. So, this website is extremely useful to find out where samples came from as well as where to look for them. So, what I do when I look for samples is I'll type in, I'll type in something like Tribe Called Quest. 
and I'll find out songs that I really enjoy, like Electric Relaxation. Let's check out what what sample they used. Let's click. Ugh, go away. So let's click here and let's listen in. So this is the original song by Ronnie Foster called Mystic Brew. And this is how Tribe Called Quest sampled it in their song. The biggest problem I have with trying to find samples is trying to find um, artists that have that have made music like Ronnie Foster that have music that lends itself to uh, being sampled. So like if I like a, a bad example of a sample would be something with a lot of drums that kind of conflict. This is extremely in instrumental and jazzy with just a couple rim shots of drums and hi-hats. So it totally lends itself. So what this is what I do is I'll go to music, uh, go to Spotify or Apple Music. I use Google Music and I'll type in that artist. So I'll type in Ronnie Foster. I'll find the same exact artist. What do you know? Mystic Brew is his most favorite or most popular. But what I'll do is I'll go and I'll just listen to his albums and I'll just try to find something. Um, gosh dang it. Come on, Google. Why do you always freaking crash on me? So I'll just listen to one of his albums or I'll listen to his most popular and I'll try to find something that lends itself to, uh, to sampling it. And I'll try to flip it or I'll try to tweak it. So use this tactic. It's... It helped me find these samples that we worked on. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you did, please leave me some feedback in the comment section if you did. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, once again, my name is Cole Zarek, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.